Hey everyone, welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. We've reached episode 701. 700 has come and it's gone. And we're on to 800. Slowly. No. Take us a couple years, but we'll, we'll yeah, make I it. I hope so. And uh, I'm Sebastian Peak. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. Uh, I'm Brad Vance Rimberg. And we have uh, actually a surprising amount of stuff to talk about. We just finished a holiday week where we took the week off. Uh, we didn't podcast, obviously. If you were paying attention, you would have been disappointed. And if you weren't paying attention, then this is totally irrelevant more. for you. Yes. Yeah, there might uh, still be some disappointment in the air, but sure. yeah, yeah, that's true. And speaking of disappointment, you can support us on Patreon. We have a Patreon. We're one of those content creators who begs for money. But Patreon does actually keep us going, and uh, you can put your name right here by contributing to our channel. Don't just contribute to get your name here and then cancel a day later. Actually make a difference, and we will thank you for it. (laughs) Let's move to Laramie, Wyoming, and Josh, uh, as he talks about food. Food? Again. Glorious Okay, so sadly... The burger we had this week is the same as last week, which, unfortunately, I don't know which one Sebastian's going to pull up this week's or last week's. What you going to do, Sebastian? Sebastian, he's going to wing it. Would be today. Uh-huh. All right. Well, <laughs> you just know, winging last it. That's week, right. <laughs> last uh, <laughs> last week uh, was the uh, the bless your soul, I think it was, or something like that. Uh, which was a, a pimento cheese burger thing that was oh, awesome. Okay, Absolutely. okay, hold on. Let me just let's just go through Josh's Twitter feed. Oh God, it's going to take we, forever because I know because you tweet like a, a lot, madman. This oh, okay? Oh, oh yeah, that's the one. All right, let's let's, about that instead of let's continue into the burger segment, shall we? <sighs> oh, well, scroll down so tired. I can show you what that is. Oh Lord, okay. There it is. There it is. The bless your heart. It was a layer of pimento cheese covered with smoked bacon, a single patty, tomato, whole onion, white onion, rather, and tomato. And you think, wow, that sounds really simple and boring, but it's not. It was really super tasty, especially if you like onions. And I like onions. Mm. The tomatoes, the bacon, the smoked bacon. I mean, seriously, man, who smokes their bacon? These people do, and it's wonderful. And just the acid and the pimento cheese, and then the onion, and the lettuce, and the tomato, and the and the base of the burger—it all comes together, and it's wonderful. And I would probably have gotten it again, but it just—it's—it's it's amazingly rich, and it's good. And when they say "bless your yeah. heart," it's—it's it's not going to actually bless your heart, is it? No, no, it's, no, <laughs> it's not. I'm going to die soon. And it's not going to be pretty. But when exactly is it ever pretty? So you got to live. And I have. And well, I've got no regrets. No regrets. Regrets. No regrets. No regrets. To our listeners and viewers, Josh Walrath <laughs> is uh, one of the many longtime sufferers of imminent death syndrome. He could literally go at any time, and it's true. It's like in San Francisco. Every once in a while, I just I just grasp my shirt and say, "Never." <laughs> Let's move to news, and of course, one of the big stories over the holiday were price drops on Ryzen processors, official ones, even at AMD's direct store, up to twenty, mm-hmm. up to twenty eight percent off. That took the. I don't know why it says list price seven ninety nine for this because it's actually um six ninety nine. Wow, it looks better. It does look better. It's more of a discount. But the Ryzen nine seventy nine fifty X is still selling. I believe five seventy four was six ninety nine. The seventy nine hundred X down to four seventy four. The seventy seven hundred X down to three forty nine, and the seventy six hundred X is down to two forty nine. That's fifty dollars off. <clears throat> That's a chunk of change. Have have uh, motherboard prices uh, dropped down? Uh, since yeah. So uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, not only did Amazon, oh well, <clears throat> have the uh, lower prices, but okay. Here's a little bit of a controversy here, or at least I'd like to make it one. <laughs> this screenshot shows this banner above each of these processors on AMD's store. 
new low price. So I, I wrote this article saying, given the label, we now know these are in fact permanent price drops. And of course, later there was a story saying, no, it was temporary because of some um, statement. Does it now say old AMD high rep. price? Well, now it says deals on our newest processors. Mm. So I took a new screenshot. Mm. Mm. Same prices, but in theory, they're going back up. So buy now and then wait for a cheap motherboard, I guess. What's sad is that they don't have any of the 5800X 3D at the 2329. They're constantly just sold out. No, at AMD? Yeah. It's now constantly sold out. I mean, boy, that is one very popular CPU for many good reasons. And there's a lot of people out there gaming, and they want a game. And it's a great one for what they do. And it's going to continue to be great for a while. And at that price, that's fantastic. And I really should talk, stop talking about it because people keep buying the damn things. Hey, Josh. Nobody will be able to get it. It's what? in stock right now. It's in stock right Where? now. And online. It's, it's back. It's Look at back, the screen. Baby. 329. Oh, free oh, ground yeah, shipping. Today and it, was, it was gone. Yeah, they keep on going out and then back into stock. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Restocking thing. Uh, so yeah, it's the best deal going. Go. Do you think AMD... Should they just not have released this product? <clears throat> this because the X3D is so good. Yeah. If you're just, if you're just gaming, you don't need Zen Four. Whoa, X3D. Hardo CP TV says the 5800 X3D bucks. was 280 shipped on Nuag yesterday. I didn't see that. Wow, I didn't Dang see that. Either. I didn't, but I'm shopping in Canada, so. Oh, okay. Well, Kyle's in the United States of America. I know. Oh. America. The land of the deals. I wonder how long they'll they'll keep producing those and when they're going to go EOL because it's just almost too good of a product. And plus, there's eventually going to be a spot where it becomes really... Um, I mean, the margins take too much of a hit because... Yeah. I mean, you, you got two dies in there and uh, packaging, um, you know, putting those chips together is another step that is probably not inexpensive. I mean, they've they've got it down now, but it still adds cost to the, the yeah. bill of materials and sales. But so. if you keep buying them all out, maybe it'll come back for Zen 5 or whatever they call it. Oh, it's 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 well, Zen 4 is going to have 3D. It's probably, uh, you know, I'm thinking probably February, March. Okay. Because they've been cagey about that. A couple of yeah, people I mean, you know, there have been rumors about January, but we haven't heard a whole lot. But it's still going to be down. So I, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe they have so much stock of the regular <laughs> Zen Four without 3D. I mean, they're like, mm, we're going to hold off because people yeah. aren't buying these nearly as ex- fast as, as we were expecting and or hoping. Absolute cheapest deal on an AM5 board on Newegg right now is $160 with a $1 shipping. Why? Just give it to me for free. Why charge me 99 cents for shipping? Hmm. Why not? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you're going to pay it, so. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> so about $161 shipped before taxes. And... AM4 yeah. boards, I think, started about 80. So this is still double the cost of your lowest end AM4 board, but I mean, the cheapest AM4 board. You can get 32 gigs, 32 gigs of 3600 DDR4 memory for less than 100 bucks. I mean, it's not the greatest cast latency, but it doesn't really matter for less than $100. Well, what about. Uh, Shell shocker prices on DDR5. Look at that. 32 gigs Double. for just 200, $215. It's such Great a bargain. God. <laughs> Actually, yeah. you don't you don't even need 6400. Let's see. This is an AMD system, so no. you need the 6000. That's oh, only well, 187.99. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't hate that. It's not That's great. It's not bad. But it's not bad. I'm afraid with the timing on it and the one beside it, but well, DDR5 still twice as expensive as DDR4. That's and part of the motherboards problem. twice as expensive. Mm-hmm. 
we're going to give you some $50 off. Unless you go to Micro Center, which will they'll just oh, give you some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they tuck a little in your pocket on the way out the door. Hmm. <laughs> what? Just, just the tip. Yep. DDR5. They just give you a little bit. Well, they give you the secret them. handshake. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's hidden inside their hand as they shake your hand. Thanks for coming by. You, you can't. That's, uh, that's the Maryland store. I don't go there very often. Oh, okay. Yeah, what yeah, was yeah. the deal with the Micro Center AMD DDR5 free RAM? Was it AMD did a purchase through mm-hmm. G Skill, which was to be distributed through Micro Center, or it was like a, a rebate? I don't understand. I know yeah, that Micro money Center must does... have changed hands somewhere to pay for this memory. Oh, it's probably from <sighs> yeah. AMD directly. Yeah. But why not everywhere? Why Micro Center? Put it online. Anyone who buys a Ryzen processor gets the DDR5. It takes away the barrier. And then it's like, oh, well, the RAM is free. So, and I can sell my DDR4 for a few bucks. Which covers. Why buy the cow if you check, when the RAM is free? That's what I want to know. If, if you look on AMD.com and you say shop and check retail availability, Micro Center is one of the stores that comes up. Right. But the free RAM is an in store only offer. Well, sure. You got to show up at the store. But the point show is. Show up is at that the store. It, okay. Stop assuming that anybody and everybody can just go to a micro center because there's 25 in all of the U.S. The there's 50 thing. states and 25 that's micro the centers. the thing, man, is Do that they've the got to get people into the store so they buy a bunch of stuff. Yep. Okay? So they make a nice <clears throat> deal with AMD. AMD <clears throat> gives them a little bit more marketing fund, right? Yeah. And yeah, clearly they're see losing that. a little bit money on it, but... People who shop there typically tend to pick up more than one thing. Oh, hey, look at that SSD over there. Oh, yep. you know, I've got a motherboard for this. You know, I got to oh, get this is a five day sale. That. Wow, you've actually got RTX 4090s in stock. And they're only twenty seven ninety nine. 95. <laughs> you're also yeah. you're also face to face with a salesperson who usually aren't that they aren't that dumb. They actually do know a few really? things. So they do. Yeah. It's remarkable. Oh, so that they won't just, insist on selling you an AMD motherboard with that Intel processor you just bought? They will not. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you get the guy from Furniture, then he might. I don't know what he's no. going to suggest. But. Right. There's been a new development in memory, and unfortunately, because this is 2022, it's being framed as a uh, something that creates immersive metaverse experiences. But in reality... It's a new GDDR6. It's called GDDR6W. Josh, have you read anything about this? Are you excited? No, I just I just retweeted it. Damn it, Josh. <laughs> you you were on Twitter talking about this like, oh Josh will have it. I think it's stacked <laughs> now. So there's like, yeah, it's like more guys in the module and it's double the, the width and, and uh yeah, it's it's you know, it's oh, nice, so the I W guess. is for wide. Is that is that the W? No, I think it's fan out wafer level packaging. I was just looking because I remembered how a weird wafer. Just a wafer. Yes, yeah, I thought he said wafer because I remember the FELP uh, acronym, so I wanted to just see what it was. And yeah, it's fan out wafer level packaging, hence the W. A more true to life metaverse. This PR is, why can't we talk about the tech? Here's a little bit of actual tech. There's a rendering. I can add a the, whole new world. Yeah. To yeah. Tech there you go. So, so here we go. Just go scroll down. One more. One more. Yeah. It's scroll stacked, down. man. There you go. It is There's stacked. Here's There's GDDR6 on a PCB. Look at this. Well, now, that's one, bunk beds. now, if you count from PCB all the way up to the top of the RAM package with the GDDR6, that's over a millimeter space. 1.1 millimeters. Mm. But if you, with GDDR6W, not only are you doubling it, because it's stacked, it's only 0.7 millimeters for just the RAM package, but they're not counting the PCB now. Hmm. Okay, so it actually... Okay, does higher. RAM package height really... Is that really going to kill your application? Is that 0.4 millimeters just going to uh, ruin it all? Didn't we complain about a graphics card where the uh, GPU is taller than the memory and it didn't cool properly? So you're going to make the <laughs> GPU even taller than the memory. Yeah. yeah. 
It says here in the actual technical part of the article that the newly developed GDDR6W technology can support HBM level bandwidth at a system level. Yeah, at a system level. I'm trying to understand this. So the the pins are much faster. So if it has oh. more of them, then okay, I see, I see. So there's in theory, the pins are faster, but there's fewer of them. So 512. Yeah, but there's slightly better I/O. Well, the the pin transmission speed is fantastic. Look at that, 22 yeah, gigabit yeah, per there's, second. There's, there's yeah. fewer pins. Yes, one yes. quarter instead of 512. Time. It's 32. It's still fairly close. 1.4 terabytes per second theoretical versus 1.6 with HPM 2E. Well, that's exciting. I can't wait to have more immersive metaverse experiences thanks to this uh, exciting um, technological Okay, so overall, it's it's a good competitor to GDDR6X. Yes. It's going to give you better overall performance than that particular technology. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But you're going to have different pinouts, and you're going to have to adapt your memory controller. By the way, did you guys know that NVIDIA has a verified priority access program of their own to buy RTX 40 series? Until today. today. It's true. Oh, no. I got an email a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, what the hell's this? But hey. Yeah. Hey, and I signed up for it, although I'm not going to use it. So don't worry, people. If, if I get picked, here's a screenshot from my email that I got. You have successfully enrolled in the GeForce RTX 40 Series Verified Priority Access Program. If selected, we will notify you in the GeForce Experience application and via email. So you can potentially be selected for the opportunity to buy a graphics card from NVIDIA. Often, but you would be paying list price they, for it. How often are they pulling a uh, winner, so to speak? I have no idea. I have not done any research about it. I have not had anybody reach out to me after this article was posted and said, hey, I got it. You probably wouldn't need this for a 4080. No, that's what I hear. But <clears throat> yeah, you can buy a 4080, but they're the partner cards and they're like a $300 tax Yeah, on top of the mm-hmm. founders. And I've, NVIDIA, and every time I look at partner cards, like the one we'll talk about later, the Supreme, I think, you know, these companies don't really do their partners any favors when they release their own cards that are really good and they're cheaper than anything that a partner can sell if they want to make money. That's why there's a limited supply. Yeah. Because the, the 4080 from NVIDIA... I think I'm actually holding the 4090 here, but they're identical. They have the exact same. <laughs> they're same cooler. Cooler. So <laughs> you get a 4090 even, and it's it's a quiet card that runs pretty cool. And then you put the 4080 GPU in this thing, and it is a really quiet and even cooler running card. That and because it has absolutely no thermal limits. When you're running it in normal operation, it just boosts to the max and stays there all the time. So partner cards are not really going to be able to eclipse the performance of something that is like this. Like in the past, you were thermally constrained or you had power constraints (laughs) with the reference card and you would open up a whole new world with these boards that had much higher power limits and big beefy coolers on them. And that's just not really been the case with the 40 series so far. GPU shipments saw their biggest nosedive since the last recession, writes the register. Sort of, I'm paraphrasing, but I mean, you know, we're in a recession. Let's just admit it. And the crypto thing is just, I mean, you can't mine with cards anymore and make money on it. Good. And that was a huge driver of graphics card sales. Shockingly, though hmm. nobody wants to admit it, that's where a lot of them were going. And now they're on eBay. Supposedly, you know, clean, ready for resale. Sure. Beautiful used graphics. I've seen how they clean those. Yeah. (laughs) Power washer. (laughs) The report is NVIDIA's revenue 51% down year over year. Gaming revenue. And the nastiest part about it is that this actually encompasses anything anything with a GPU in it. So it includes uh, CPUs with a, a graphics component to it. 
NVIDIA doesn't sell those. So AMD and Intel both took that hit. NVIDIA just took it on the GPU. Well, AMD's got console sell through. So that's. Well, that's, of, a, that's I mean, the only thing to save their bacon. Right. Right. And, and there is a little bit of uplift going on, obviously with Intel, because they sell so many, you know, CPUs with graphics. I mean, that counts for them, but as Josh is our witness here, people are actually buying Intel arc. Well, it's true. They are because it's a sub $400, 16 gig, reasonable performance card. And it's interesting and it's new. And yes, the drivers still kind of suck, <laughs> but you're essentially getting weekly updates on it. I mean, they're, yeah. oh. they're working yeah. hard and they're fixing stuff constantly. So yeah, so Intel gained a little bit here and arc is uh, probably part of that situation for them. Good for them. What do you make of the AMD disparity? Like the, the shrinking market share, which I've seen reported, I think Petty said it was 10 or 12% of the total market share. Very low. Yeah, they went down from, what was it? Was it above 20 down to 12 or was it like? Yeah, it was a big drop. CPUs or GPUs? G- GPU. Yeah. Yeah, they've trying, never, trying they've never really gone really high. I mean, even during the, the height of crypto, their percentage has always been ten to fifteen percent, and yeah, um, six sixteen to the, twelve. Josh, that's that's where they went. Yeah, well, I thought it was nineteen, but yeah, I don't know. I I, I think that right now they still have some of the best value on uh, performance. Yeah, you're taking a hit in ray tracing, but everything else, you're. I mean, a sixty six hundred for two hundred bucks. I think they're what over black. Friday, the weekend, there was one for 190 and that's Ooh. an awesome card for that that price. That's a 6600 XT for 190 No, no, no it's well, just I the non-XT. Oh, the no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's yeah. still better yeah, than Polaris. Good. We finally have a card to replace sub $200. The under 200 I'm sorry, <laughs> the 580. The 580. 580. Yep. It's a great 1080 right. card. It's got all the, size. all the bells and whistles. You can get a 580 yeah, that's shaped small. like this. This is a 580. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, well, that's a small 580. Yeah, this was a this was actually sold as a I think um uh, Dell might have sold this one or HP. This was a a built-in one that came from, you know, okay. uh, mm. partner. It's a small. It's kind of a hot running chip for the time, but Ah, but it worked. Compared well to Hawaii, except in certain <laughs> circumstances where Hawaii just kind of cleaned the floor with it. But boy, it's so inexpensive for an 8 gig gaming card for 160 bucks at the lowest. 2016 was a hell of a year. Let's pause here for a word from this week's podcast sponsor. So many things can get in the way of your workplace productivity. It happens to me all the time. For many professionals, some of that can be repetitive typing or other boring tasks that waste far too much of your valuable time in the workplace. Think of how many hours you spend responding to similar questions over and over in email and chat. Then digging through your file sharing platform to track down the correct email template and then carefully personalizing those replies to make sure your message is both targeted and authentic. Text Expander is your new answer to eliminating that repetition. Text Expander's powerful shortcuts and abbreviations streamline your work. So all you have to do is type in a short abbreviation and Text Expander does the rest of the work for you. Create text templates and insert them anywhere you type with just a few keystrokes. Here's how that all works. Drop your commonly used content into the Text Expander app and give it an abbreviation. Add customizations like today's date, fill in the blank fields, timestamps, and more to make content feel totally personalized. Then all you have to do is type a few characters to expand your content and do a quick search to access it whenever you type. And that's just the beginning of how Text Expander will impact your team's productivity. The possibilities to improve your workplace productivity are endless with Text Expander. Show listeners can get 20% off their first year at Text Expander.com slash PC per. That's text expander.com slash PC per. Check it out. We're back and we're going to look at a story that Jeremy posted about running the 13900 k without e cores. What is this madness? Madness. Someone had to do it, right? 
Are okay. the E cores actually the efficiency destroying your performance? Yes. So no. If you no are only doing the performance cores, and of course these guys are are utter lunatics. They they do a fifty three yeah. game uh, span with multiple runs at multiple resolutions. So more or less, the answer is not really. The the side that you're looking on to the left, the sort of yeah. reddish gray, is with them disabled. So you put the ex- extra effort in to disable them, and so it's weird. Like Far Cry Five, hey, I actually kind of like that. Everything, uh, Greedfall, which I don't know, uh, Exodus, but you know it's a little weird. So is Prey, Metro. but the vast majority of them, Prey, huh? Yeah, vast majority, and this scatters throughout everything. Like it's not just DX11 that everything kind of likes having them disabled. Even DX12 and Vulcans don't for the most part, but there are a couple where it actually does make sense to do, but like far cry five versus far cry six. Yeah. You disable them for far cry five, but you make sure that you're enabled for far cry six and you will have about a 10% difference in performance. That's at 1080p. Let's see what the, what happens at 1440. Well, it starts to narrow out a little bit. Narrowing down a lot. Far cry five goes down to a 6% penalty. But Greedfall stays up near 9%. You know, that ultra popular. Yeah, and Prey is really happy. Yeah, Prey doesn't like those E-cores either. No. Interesting. Uh, So moving up to 4K. Actually actually like them more. Far Cry 6 actually like the E-cores more at 1440p. Yes. Yeah. Yes. More than 10%. It gets Mm -hmm. smaller as we would expect at 4K because it's more GPU bound. Yeah, they're doing it on a 4090. Yeah. So... And then they broke it up, and like I said, the DX12 and Vulcan, I mean, it's back and forth, and back not by a significant amount in most cases, but it's definitely back and forth. And then, of course, with the uh, older games, it's going to be slightly bigger, but that's just because these are older games, and they're playing it at 4090. <laughs> if only they'd used an A770. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> So the long story short seems to be that at this point, the games are not really programmed to take use of either of them and just treat them simply the same. And it almost makes zero difference, except in a couple of little uh, cases on the edge. And I'm glad we didn't have to do that because that would have been a lot of work. You know, it's not a lot of work. Hiring interns. No, that that takes a lot of the work hmm. off of your plate, but taking a card, a simple little gift card looking thing, scratching off the back, typing in a code, and getting a, f- a processor upgraded. It's not free, but it's very little effort. What was it? Software bucks? defined silicon rides again. Intel on demand. Please tell us more, Jeremy. Uh, do you want to know about the 2010 version that we just absolutely gutted them for? Because the idea was that they'd sell you a Pentium, uh, that didn't have hyper threading and had a disabled megabyte of its L3 cache. But if you gave them 50 bucks, it'd upgrade it to support hyper threading and that extra L3, it was enabled, except you could actually buy an i3 530, which is essentially that but it only costs 15 to 20 bucks more than that Pentium. Not to mention why the hell you're selling scratch and stiff cards at the uh, uh, entryway of Best Buy to try and upgrade the processor you've just bought. Well, apparently we didn't mock them hard enough because <laughs> when Software Rapids comes out next year, it's, and these are, these are the Xeons, the, the business ones. So the consumers didn't like it. Business though business here we go so they disable all of like their software guard extensions the quick assist uh a bunch of like the new stuff coming in with uh software sapphire rapids and it will be artificially disabled on your chip unless you pay for an upgrade and it's not a different skew it's still the, it's still going to be the same skew and it's not like xeon doesn't usually have 50 or 60 skews um but now they're going to be ones that, where it's artificially disabled unless you pay for software-defined silicon service, in which case it becomes more like one of the higher-end SKUs, except not. I have no <clears> idea who <throat> came up with this, but it's just about as dumb as it was the first time. 
The, the theory is it's a try before you buy. Well, you don't have to buy all of those extra features that you don't necessarily need. But when you find out you do need them because we're going to make sure you do, well, start paying us monthly bills. Yeah, I don't get it. Oh, it's hardware like as a service. BMW. It's like paying yeah. BMW to uh, rent your heated steering wheel at $50 a month. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's been normalized story. now. Mm-hmm. This is one of the 737 Max from not crashing into the ground. Right. You have to pay monthly to rent a hardware feature that you actually own, sort of. Yes. Welcome to BMW. Yeah. <laughs> so many more industries are getting the same idea. I, I feel done. I dirty. blame Adobe. <laughs> True. I yeah. blame Adobe. Damn Adobe. They, they made the best business decision of the century when they decided to go for yeah. the subscri- subscription model because a lot of people pirated the uh, creative suites. Not that you I'm speaking say. from experience. No. At all. Hey, is Windows 11 slowing you down? Did you finally upgrade, but you're noticing that performance isn't as magical and you know as you thought it was going to be? There's a patch for that. Just patch it. You can fix it. Patch- Release beta software and then patch it and patch it and patch it some more. Well, that's- they're patching it in beta as well, so. Oh, okay. Well, that that's only appropriate. 22H2. Now, we, we know that has... Yeah, Windows 11, not Windows 10, because they both have the exact same name for reasons known only to Redmond. Yeah. You're, I'm sure the build number reminded is me, different. I hope Your intro reminded me of a Portlandia episode. I'm trying to remember which one it was, but anyway, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Just so, patch it. Yes. Yeah. So they, they enabled uh, development debugger features on GPUs. It, I, I, you know, it doesn't even have the driver. It's not running the driver for your GPU, but that doesn't matter. It's still got its fingers in there. And so it enabled a whole bunch of debugging features, which, shockingly enough reduce the performance of your card as it's busy trying to send logs to something it can't because it's not hooked up to diagnostic equipment. But hey, uh, so there is a preview update that you can grab to uh, see if that fixes it or not. Ugh. They say it does, but it's it's a preview update. So uh, there you go. Uh, and then the other Hello, one is amusing. beta testers. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, each and every one of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> You know, Microsoft the, the, used to have the, a lot of people internally who did all of that testing yeah. mm-hmm. before and they realized the gold master they could just externalize it all. <laughs> Essentially, our customers can do this for free. Huh? Yes. No. Our customers can pay us to do it. <laughs> yeah. It's even better. <laughs> we don't do this for free. We're paying a licensing fee. And the other one, they've messaged up uh, server message block. So if you're doing uh, simple copy stuff, it, it just like tanks your systems what? copying. What yeah, I mean it's not, it's a new technology. They're they're not familiar with it very well much yet. SMB, that's new. Yeah, yeah, apparently. <laughs> but if you do like a robocopy, you completely ignore it, and it goes like it should. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> And let's oh, not forget boy. that you have to play this game with Windows 11 where you have to pick the right build or your processor performance won't be as high. Yes. Like measurably worse performance with 22H2 if you're running an AMD Ryzen CPU. So just avoid it. Just avoid it until all the bugs have been worked out and then there's a 22H2.1 or whatever it'll be called. I'm on 2013. 20- 2H1 or 21H2. I don't even know what the build is. The one before this, on Windows 11, is what 21 I 21H2. Benching. But what are you running on the machines you actually care about? <sighs> BOS. Windows 98, <laughs> second edition. Windows 98 SC2. DOS that's 6.22. It, I accept that as a legitimate answer. The, the machines I actually care about, yeah, there's those are all DOS and like Windows 98 era machines. But Yeah, okay. All I'm right. starting, hey, you know what? I'm starting to get into Windows XP. It's, it's, well, things have been moving no forward here. It's different. Have you heard of multitasking yet? It's hey, uh, I, like simultaneous. I have uh, a I'm talking dual, about symmetric, not process, have, not process task switching. I have dual <laughs> CPU systems, but I've been playing around with this two processors in again. one kind of a thing. Mm, okay. It's pretty wild. And Windows That's XP, crazy. you can see them both. Wow. Mm. Okay. 
That's core the, technology is what you got the, there. The performance from my uh, GTX, uh, no, I'm sorry, GTS 250 is uh, pretty, mm-hmm. pretty fantastic. Pretty solid. Mm. You know, Let's, oftentimes this is a neglected part of your security awareness part of making sure your system isn't getting hacked. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. I just, that's my comment. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I stole your comment. All right, go, go, Jeremy. Go ahead. Via bleeping computer, no. NVIDIA releases a GPU driver update to fix 29 security flaws. This is uh, just today. On Windows and Linux, by the way, not November just 30. freaking Windows. So what was the security flaw? Locally exploited user mode flaw in the Windows GPU driver, allowing an unprivileged regular user to access or modify files critical to the application. I mean, how bad could that be? Yeah. It's locally. Oh, oh, wait, the next one. Wait. Oh, whoops. Oh, and remotely, remotely exploited user flaw in the Windows GPU driver. <laughs> huh, that sounds bad. Yes, it is. It is. And there's 29 of them of assorted flavors and severity yeah. levels. Good Lord. Now, as you can see from this table, the quote unquote nice thing that NVIDIA does bring to the table is that they're doing an upgrade for everything. I mean, you're seeing Quadro, uh, Tesla, um, driver versions, all the, all up and down, Kepler, you know, so you see them in Linux. This is clearly a severe flaw that is in very base code common to all their drivers. Are you saying that because, I'm getting a, a driver update for my 680 now? Uh, yeah, you may, got, yes. Yeah, wow. yeah, probably. But I, again, I, I, sorry to steal your thunder on this, Jeremy, but this is an often overlooked area of, of security awareness in your GPU driver. Yep. It makes you wonder how long stuff sits there before it gets patched. Uh, what, what did it done. say prior to version 47406? Oh, um, that's ancient. <clears throat> for what, oh, what 47404? For what card? For what series? <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, really 47404 oh, is a quadro. That's quadro, a freaking okay. quadro or an NVS, so that's a production machine. Uh, and the others are GeForce. So branch R470. So, yeah. Uh, Oh, God. The world is an unsafe place for your computing environment. Just unplug it. <laughs> yep. If you never plug it in. Because sure. there can be nothing that goes in. wrong updating your firmware over Windows Update. Oh, my no, favorite that thing. That's not perfect. And I didn't feel like uh, text or was Twittering you on this, Josh, is have you noticed that it does it for microcode updates on processors and doesn't tell mm-hmm. you? Unless you mm. tell it to reveal the optional updates where you realize, oh, well, We're doing I hope some they don't. serious stuff under the hood. Is yeah. that when you get like uh, during the during the boot process, it's not done patching and you get a partial reboot and then it boots again and like, oh, that was probably a microcode I'm update. pretty sure. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, pretty sure. Actually, yeah, I just looked up the 680 and they dropped support for Kepler a while back. But here we have a G4 security update driver version 474.04. Wickle released on November 22, 2022. Oh, right. In a shockingly embarrassing move, your video card has just hacked your system. <laughs> but don't worry, it gets better. Or I mean worse. Uh. Yes. So yeah, uh, if you're running any version of an NVIDIA card, please, please update. I was just hoping that wise. maybe this would uh, bring uh, some of these older cards up to date with some of the performance enhancements, but no, this is just a security if, patch to an existing driver revision. If it's still Wickle, because I'm pretty sure they didn't take the time to get it uh, qualified again. Yeah. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> yeah, I can't imagine. Clearly, this is in some sort of core library that's like a, you know, think of a build system that does a, a very large, you know, structured code include, and it's a core element that's included in every, every build for every version of every driver, so... But you're not going to get anything else out of this. Just this, just this patch. Moving on Speaking to another patches. security story: data leaks. Mm. And by the way, the picture of a girl holding a leak leaks is, him. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. great. Data leaks nice from both camera. Twitter and Meta uh, again. So what is it now? I mean, aren't you shocked? No, this is normal. I, I wrote this literally in the show notes as the usual suspects. <laughs> <laughs> or the regular suspects, I, sh- I said. Yeah. So uh, what essentially what they did with Twitter 
uh, last July. So don't blame anyone that uh, is currently there because uh, they don't work there anymore, probably. But uh, it someone got millions of accounts. Uh, so all they had to do was submit a phone number and an email address into the Twitter, which would give them the Twitter ID. So they could just sort of feed, fill, fill in phone numbers and email addresses, and if they got a hit, they would get a valid Twitter ID back on it. Um, so they ended up gleaning millions of them. Somewhere around 5.4 million accounts are available for free on the dark web if you want to go shopping. But there's another 1.4 that are available at a cost, presumably, you know, uh, relatively famous people. And there's also a much larger database that they haven't even been able to find yet, but is definitely for sale. So they've now matched Twitter ID to a phone number and an email address. And that's a hell of a good start towards making someone's life a nightmare. Uh, because you can use that to prove your yourself through other things and it can be get very interesting. I uh, think the point that you've left out here is it begins to make your life very, very, very bad, not on Twitter, but if you can begin <laughs> to know somebody's phone number and their name, and their email address, you know, that's sort of a gateway drug to doing things like banking, you know, or, you know, accessing. Exactly other what, yes. That's yeah. what I was implying is that, yeah, it's, it's, and just because you like to post pictures of burgers on the web. Not that I bought mm, Josh's. That stuff. guy or that guy. You know what? Actually, they're available guy. for free. Exactly. They probably yeah. have his full Twitter cr- credentials, and nobody wants to be that guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They actually You're taking my past. No, like, we don't want You're to s- take that on. Yeah. You're safe. And, and yeah, Meta, on the other hand, uh, they, they weren't really hacked as much as they were selling information more or less oh well that's uh, again and then that got bought by someone who shouldn't have got it who then posted it for sale again well ireland uh thanks to gpdr was at least able to give them a slap on the wrist of 277 million dollars which uh i'm pretty sure they made back in the next five minutes so you need to be careful where you get your afterburner msi says the only place to get it is from MSI directly. Anyway, uh, there have been these fake sites that are targeting people trying to find Afterburner and search results, probably from garbage search engines like Bing, where you always find all the, the trash. They're dressed up. They're dressed up. Right. You look, go to the like site, MSI it looks sites. real. It yes. looks real. Yeah. I got yes. an email yesterday from what looked like DHL, but didn't actually say DHL anywhere. And it was saying, that I had a package, but they couldn't deliver it until I clicked to confirm my information. And I was just staring at it like, first of all, they, my name was truncated weirdly. But I get shipments, DHL is usually like, you know, I don't know. Graphics cards from overseas will come DHL. I thought it could be real, but I looked very carefully and saw all the spelling errors and the lack of a DHL logo and decided to just... Uh, delete it let's not click on are you sure that wasn't actually g dhl it may have been and i'm I'm just (laughs) not gonna get a graphics card now (laughs) sapphire tech who is this delete (laughs) anyway yeah so be careful where you get uh look at these domains so msi afterburner download dot site download dot are you don't just type msi afterburner into google and click on the first link don't just don't. Well, okay. If Look. you do it into Google, you're probably fine. Let's do it right yeah. now, live. All right, let's go ahead. Go ahead. Do well, it. Right I'm now. gonna go to. Uh, we'll do it live. Bing. Do it live. Do it live. The world's best search engine, of course. Okay. I'm gonna this do MSI yep. after. Download. Word. Okay. Do- download. 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 Yeah, that one. That's Let's the, do the one. first one. Okay, it's correct. It's actually MSI.com. That's, right. that's, that's probably sponsored. That's probably sponsored link. Here's the text, text spot, spot one. This is actually where I usually get it from. Not that's three, that's three probably 3D. correct. Oh, and there we go. MSI after Co. Okay. Sus. Sus. Let's go here. All right. Yeah, don't, download. Don't do this. Oh, oh, you, you're doing it. Okay. <laughs> download. We're downloading. We're going, we're going off the air now. This is and it starts going to Bytes Transfer. You? What are you doing? 
uploader they profile. Put a hash up there. The uploader <laughs> profile is MSI Afterburner. Oh, so MSI Sign- Afterburner is developed by MSI Afterburner. That's good. Sign up now. Makes Sign sense up now. now. Bottom, bottom right hand corner. Sign up now. Sign up yeah. now. Yeah. What could possibly <laughs> go wrong? And oh, suddenly, dang. Sebastian's fans started getting louder uh, and louder. <laughs> Mining's not dead. Mining is not dead. No. It's mining, mining that you have to pay is. for is dead. Mining that you can hmm. steal off of other people's hardware is not dead. Excellent point. All right, let's move on to gaming quick hits. <laughs> Sam's comment, Wait. Sebastian woke up today and chose violence. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it chose me. You can get synced right now. There's an open beta. Well, no, on the 10th. Well, on the 10th. Ooh. Okay, fine. Ah, okay. In less than two beta. weeks. Ooh. Ah. Name the movie, except it's alpha beta. Yeah, you got that wrong, and it doesn't make sense anymore. <sighs> sure it doesn't. Ooh, ah, alpha beta. Open. So this is a r- yeah. rogue looter? Come on, people. Hero Revenge shooter? The nerds. Revenge rogue looter? The nerds. I get it. Anyway. Bye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm leaving now. Okay. No, no, don't go. No, no. Do we talk about this game or move on to the next gaming? Let's quick move hit? this game. Rogue looter. Rogue looter. Shooter. It's a shooter. So if, hero if shooter. you want if you want a rogue looter shooter, is this third party? No, it's a hero third, shooter. Third person or first person? First person. We, it's first person? Okay. Sync. Well, I just want to open beta. I might as well yeah. tell people about it. Yes, exactly. And the tenth. Hero shooters are big right now. There's only like cool. 80 of them are available. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the next this Apex. could be the next big one. You never know. Valorant. And of course, Witcher 3, December 14. What's happening? If you own it, good news. If you don't, well, don't buy it until then, uh, more or less. But they're, they're pumping out a uh, complete edition. Free for anyone who owns it, which is they're going to dump the DLC on you. So you get Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine for free. So don't bother to pick those up either. But uh, it's going to, and it's also going to incorporate a bunch of uh, modders work that they put a lot of effort into. And I'm sure uh, CD Projekt Red is very happy to have taken advantage of. It will have beyond ultra quality settings. It will support FSR and DLS. It will be ray traced uh, for those playing on, and it's going to be ray traced on the PlayStation Five version as I well. I saw that, so mm-hmm. that suggests mm. DXR. Yeah, they don't say it. I couldn't find it anywhere, and I did look, but that seems to be good proof that well, hey, you're still going to be hurting compared to a car that has, you know, dedicated hardware for ray tracing, but it shouldn't be too bad. So yeah, yeah. if you if you own it, you're going to have a little bit more fun in, uh, on the 14th. And if nice. you don't, well, you can buy it as a standalone. Sounds like we'll have to start using nice that game but my, for But my question game. is, yeah, is it going to keep hair works? Because that used to be the original thing with Witcher 3 was NVIDIA hair works, and you could utterly destroy your performance by turning it on. Ubisoft, they've come back to Steam. It's over. <laughs> they left in a huff years ago, and they tried to Baby, start a new life. Me. And they said, I you know, our sales it. are probably way lower than they would be if we were in Steam. Even you know, 30% thirty percent isn't that bad. Yeah, right. Exactly. Who did? We'll make and, it up I mean, on you know, volume. I put in the show note, this is after Activision also went, okay, you win. Yeah. And then EA, of course, all they right, said, we give. Right. So and it's Gabe, Ubisoft's just, turn. Do you think Gabe welcomed them back with open arms? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I'm you sure mean the like in the God was, Priest sort of? Said, you guys think about this for a second. Up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know what? The deal was 30%. It's 40 now. <laughs> Hey, you that chose. Is a I thought I was out, and they <laughs> pulled me back, back in back. again. <laughs> you mentioned forty, and I want to very briefly touch on a forty series GPU review published on November hey. twenty three at PCPro dot com. It is none other than the Supreme X version of the ever popular NVIDIA GeForce RTX forty eighty, and it's the card oh. that. That's available. It's the card 
that you can buy the 4080. Now, should you buy it? Now, okay, when I heard Supreme, I immediately had visions of this beautiful triple eight pin design of the RTX 3090 yes. Supreme X. Yes. And I thought, oh man, this one only needs three. It'll just incorporate that again. And n- no, it's the mm. 12 volt mm. high power. Mm. But look how much thicker this It's hard to tell in this photo just oh, how no, much. It's easy to tell. That's thick. And it's, oh, a, yeah. it's, it's thick. The 4080 is not that demanding of a GPU. It's not even very big, but they use these massive coolers. This is the same cooler they use on the 4090 Supreme X, so that's why it's so massive. Triple slot design. Nice looking, not too fancy. It has some lights on it, but nothing crazy. Nice uh, photography, by the way. Two bio oh. settings. Yep. Can two, you actually two. change those? Yeah. yeah. Gaming and silent. silent. They make, they make silent, almost... No no difference at all. Difference. Very subtle. <laughs> <clears throat> I was going to say, when you're already overcooling the card, it's... <laughs> yeah, the, it's the like fans either yeah. barely spin up or barely spin up minus 100 RPM is what it amounted to. <laughs> so I did some performance uh, benchmarking on our test bed, which is a MSI Meg X670E Ace motherboard running BIOS uh, 1.25, which is a GISA combo PI 1.0.0.3 patch A. Rebar was enabled. 7950X CPU stock using 32 gigs of that G skill Trident Z Neo DDR5 6000. CL30. We do have the tight timings mm. on our memory. Hynix Platinum P41 2 terabyte SSD. Be quiet. Dark Power Pro 1500 watt CPU or PSU. PSU. Yeah. Anyway. All and of that slow, being said, is that, the, is that the slow Windows 11 you've got there? Or the I have the faster Windows, Windows 11, the oh, better okay, Windows right. 11. So just the checking. Supreme X versus the Founders Edition, as you can see here, here's just our first look. Pris Port Royal, they're almost the same. It's like margin of error, both 17,900 and something. And uh, 3D Mark Speedway, another demanding ray trace test, uh, <sighs> margin of error again, 7,100 and 50-ish, both of them. And uh, that's just that's the story with this, is that you'll find very slight differences. The one time it was slightly worse in a real game was Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, where the 1% lows were a 2 FPS lower with that card. But 1% lows on AM5 are not great anyway compared to an Intel platform. And it makes me want to move over to the 1300K for GPU testing, but not yet, because I have to throw away a lot of benchmark results. So the Supreme X in here, Cyberpunk, it, these, these are all ultra wide, so 3440 by 1440 ultra. This is a test without ray tracing, and just in pure raster, they're almost identical again. I'm about 80, mm. 84 FPS on the. Low, one percent lows, and then yeah, yep. the average is one hundred three for both one one hundred three point thirteen for the Supreme X versus one hundred two point eighty three for the Founders right. Edition. So, and again, this is ultra ultra wide. Yeah, ultra wide ultra settings. Uh, the clocks were very very high. They were twenty eight twenty, but so was the Founders Edition. Although this one did touch twenty eight thirty five, so it, it can. And then board power. This is again. This is the factory overclocked. Supreme X, and it was not exceeding 316 watts total board power of a 320 watt uh, stock GDP. Now you can take things uh, quite a ways. Uh, uh, there's a 125 percent power limit on this card and unlocked voltage. I went into MSI's afterburner. I got it from MSI, Good and call. I, inc- I increased. Uh, the core clocks, I wanted to get to 3,000. I wanted to get 3 gigahertz on the core. And I wanted it to be perfectly stable in benchmarks and games. So I started adding voltage because it wasn't perfectly stable. And maybe I was doing it backwards. And maybe I should have been taking voltage away. But I just, I did this horrible attempt at overclocking. And I ended up uh, settling on plus 150 on the core, plus 25 on voltage. And I could get it to complete benchmarks like Metro uh, Exodus Enhanced, Cyberpunk 27.7. In Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, at the same settings as before, the overclock got us an extra three and a half, four frames per second. And in Cyberpunk, 
the overclock got us about three <laughs> frames per second. So not exciting. Mm. You pump a bunch of extra power into it. I saw the board power rise to 375 watts, basically, from 316. And I got three to four FPS out of it. So as has been widely documented by Gerbauer and others, if you lower the power limit to, say, 80 or 90%, you're getting almost all the performance with a lot less power draw. It makes very little sense to increase the power limit because you're not really going to gain anything out of it. And the other problem with aftermarket designs is the price. This is thirteen seventy nine ninety nine. That's 15%. That's, uh, that, um, pricey. That's 15%. Doesn't seem to compare doesn't seem to compare favorably with a 3090. I'm sorry, 4090. Mm, not really. I mean, if in the theoretical world where you can I mean, buy if one you could buy a 4090. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. That yes. It's just that there's nothing to get excited about with this launch. MSI did a nice job with the Supreme X. The cooler is extremely big and efficient and it's very quiet and I just can't help but think Maybe NVIDIA lowering the TDP from 420 to 320 happened pretty late in the game. Because we'd seen all these rumors about 420 being the number for the 4080 and 600 being the number for the 4090. And then NVIDIA releases the 4090 at 450 for their version. And then the 4080 comes out at uh, 320 watts. I, I don't really understand. We have these massive overbuilt designs this would have been a dual slot card. There is there's any number of 320 watt RTX 30 series cards out there with dual slot coolers that are just fine. Do you really need a triple slot cooler that weighs a metric ton for a <laughs> 380 millimeter square GPU that pulls 320 watts total board power? The actual chip power is well under this. I just don't get it. Well, if you don't have Walk to redesign an entire new heat sink. Mm. I mean, they're, tool. they're they're not really, you know, enjoying the margins. So one size fits all. Uh, before we get to Jeremy's uh, review, I have not yet made a landing page for the video that went up for Josh a couple of days ago. I mean, we oh, have Josh, yeah, nice on job you- on that, by the way. On our YouTube channel, and I'm going to go there right now. You can see that we're live, talking about tech. But look at this. Thrustmaster TCA Officer Pack Airbus Edition. Josh reviewed it. I did, and even though I talked about it some, you know, months ago for seemingly ad nauseum, we needed to have a, a standalone and I wanted to cover a few other things about it. And so, you know, my room has changed a little bit in that there's no duct tape to the right of me in my wife's desk. Maybe there is. I don't know. Yeah, there is. It's I gotten worse. It. Wait, are you? Yeah, are you wearing the same Carhartt shirt as? No, you in this, this video? is this is no. a green Carhartt shirt, not blue. Okay. See, it's it's got the crew neck. This is this is just a regular T-shirt. Yeah. Plus, you're not okay. wearing the headphones. <laughs> I can. I don't even know what's real anymore. It's like the metaverse. No, There's a really does. one of those digital duplicates they talk about. Josh, one of the most interesting things that I didn't realize is that the throttles actually included the option to go with pedals. I didn't yeah. I had no idea that that was available as an option. Yeah. <clears throat> What's the pedal cluster cost? Uh, like 135, I think. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that uh, you could lock out the twist on the stick in order to Co- correct. Accurately you want to see that? Use the pedals. There's, there's the, yep. the bu- button there. Push it down hard. Hear that click? And then the twist. Then the twist is locked yeah, out. No twist gone. Cool. Twist is gone. Oh, cool. interesting. And then, I don't know how. Oh yeah, you just pop it back up. But yeah, no, this is a it's a fun uh, little joystick and uh, throttle collection. It's got and the only downside. Action. The only downside you says was remembering which buttons did what. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that was, you gotta you gotta memorize that. Uh, I, I you know I just remember. Hollywood Squares. Uh, what was that guy's name? Paul. Jim J. Bullock. No, Paul. Paul something. But Schaefer. He had a whole thing about <clears throat> no. He died some years back. Paul Lindy. Can't thank oh. you. Kent. Kent. 
Thanks, they, Ken. They, they, he, had a, he, he took his microphone and started, you know, talking about all the things that a joystick did. And this is an obviously gay man in, in the 80s. And it was it was it was hilarious. But boy, was it a little scandalous. Hmm. But Paul Lindy. Hollywood Square was, tended to be. He was a uh, he was a legend. Miss him. He was what hilarious. Are we talking about? Yeah. One of the commenters, by the way, Josh, was commending you on your masterful self-control when they were expecting 13 minutes That's of true. innuendo. That's Josh, true. with a joystick review, and it was, you played it straight the whole time. It was impressive mm-hmm. and a little disappointing, but, you know, there was, a little. Some, there was uh, a little subtle humor baked in there a little, you know. Every once in a while. I threw in a Riker joke, which I thought was hilarious. Pretty I liked good. your Riker, your Riker fade in, and then right because Josh is like, you don't want to be a first officer your whole life, and then well, he kind of looks did. off to the side. He's like, well, and Riker. right as he turns, Riker appears next to him, as if Josh gave him a little glance. He's like, I mean, I expect better of you, and then Riker disappears yeah. again. It's like yeah. we planned it. <laughs> <clears throat> Would you recommend the uh, Airbus design just for anyone, or does it have to be specifically for flying the Airbus, or does it work with any? No, it, it works shoes. with any of them. Okay. I mean, it, it's uh, the the throttle control. As long as you, uh, you know, you kind of ignore the detents. Uh, so the Airbus throttle is it, they've got a kind of an auto throttle thing in the real life, and so when you take off, you go to like the top detent, and then you know after you kind of level off, you do that. But it it does again. It's 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 Airbus has designed an aircraft that essentially flies itself and that's why it's very very popular um, among other nations and areas where maybe pilots aren't trained as well as as they could be boeing is a little bit more hands-on um but yeah it's 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 but, but yeah you you can use that for other aircraft not just the airbus that are in microsoft but it's you know when, when you start using the the detent uh that it's it's more similar to what you actually will find in an Airbus. From a controller perspective, you know what I'm talking about. Detent, right? You are. Mm. From a controller perspective, you did mention calibration. Cl- you go click. That's the first detent. Yeah. Second, and yeah. then third. You never go to the third in the actual Airbus unless you're in real trouble. And then that would be an emergency. Uh, the yeah, abort and on then the you've got the thrust reverser switches. There you go. And the, the switches are really nice, too. They have a good feel to them. Like how it has a satisfying re- clunk. How often do you it. recalibrate? How often do you have to recalibrate? Uh, every time you plug it in. Video. If you keep it really? plugged in, you don't have to recalibrate. If you plug it, unplug it and plug it back in, you got to recalibrate. Hmm. Okay. Check out Josh's video to learn more. Check it nice. out. It's a good video. Check it. Jeremy... Check it also reviewed something, and I think you're, are you sitting in it right now? Why? Well, yes. I, don't I look a little different than normal? I, I couldn't tell. I thought you maybe know, you'd, you'd colored your he hair. Does, or he something. does look slightly, slightly more handsome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you drunk? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. It might be like yeah, the focus only, on uh, the camera change. Maybe yeah, it is. Like maybe yeah. Yeah, something. Yeah, it's 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 snowing outside, so the white's completely different. And, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Tell us about yeah, the Verta gear. Yeah, the uh, you know plentiful lap sixty eight hundred. The PL is that what the PL stands for? I it could, it could well because I, I've had a problem with some of the gaming chairs that I've sat in, and they've definitely made me not even ever consider a gaming chair. Is that they tend to be a bit small. They're built for someone that's, you know, not quite built like Josh and I. So this, this is Air- thing, a 380 no. wide. Airbus yes. wide. This thing is designed that the minimum they would suggest that you are is five foot nine. And probably about 200 pounds. Because let me tell you, the cushioning on this thing, if you don't weigh 200 pounds or more, you're not going to like it because it's not going to move. You might as well be sitting on a brick. Uh, okay. But it's designed for up to 400 pound and six foot eight linebacker. And it's wide enough to fit on it. It's 
impressively big. And the, the box is ridiculous. Like it was so completely packaged and you began to get an idea because I grabbed it and it was more or less a two person lip I, lift. I think it was upwards of 80 pounds. Whoa. The, the entire complete box. So yeah, it's, uh, it's beefy. Uh, everything on it is, is large and it's, got some interesting things like that they've infused nano coffee grounds into this cushions to uh suppress any odors that you might make as you uh tend to use it did the cat the, like the so, coffee ground uh infusion she or, or now they, tends to sleep on this more often than on the bed or mm. did the cat like so the box I think she more. Does. uh they did get the box but that was more him okay Love these cat action shots. It's very nice. Very nice. I, Look, I had no choice. Them. I had no <laughs> choice. <laughs> I had no choice. The cats were going, when can we lay on this? <laughs> uh, yes. And they seem to like the, the firmness of it. Uh, they, they did some interesting things where a lot of the uh, ultra high uh, density foam that you're sitting on are actually uh, pylons with a hollow interior. So you actually hmm. do get a little bit of airflow going, uh, except that it's wrapped in some leather around a lot of it, which uh, does kind of restrict it. But as you can see on the bottom there, there is a bit where the, the air can flow through, which yeah. can be nice because if you've sat on an all leather chair with no ventilation whatsoever for a while, it, it becomes uncomfortable. Uh, all the stitching is really nicely done. Uh, supposedly it's got uh, silver in it to try and keep uh, anything from trying to grow on it. Uh, the backrests that you can see there, uh, the posts for the backrest, are full metal, and yet they are bloody solid. Same with the arms. The uh, five-star on the bottom with plastic casters. Uh, honestly, I kind of looked and thought, you know, plastic is a little bit weird to go with on this, but haven't had any issues with it so far, and it's nice because they're not with the weight of the chair and the weight of myself, you don't, when you sort of lean back because you see something, it doesn't go flying backwards. It, you need effort to move this thing. And it's kind of nice. It stays put where you want it to be. And it doesn't get too much inertia when you're pulling yourself in. So you don't end up crashing into the uh, desk, which again, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a nice thing. Yeah, those roller blade black. casters are nice, but yeah, you'd be flying around and smashing. Yeah, into you things, just, you, so. yeah, it, it's, it's not great. A whole bunch of different colors on it. Uh, I went with the, the Midmate Black one uh, just because why not? Uh, and that, so there it is in all of its glory. The mm -hmm. neck pillow is not bad. Uh, oh, so you bolt in. Uh, Vertigear includes all of the stuff that you'll need for it except a flashlight because <laughs> these are black screws into a black hole with black leather. And yeah. while they do line up, you do need to heave on the top of the of the backrest to be able to get it in so a flashlight really helps the neck pillow isn't bad it looks seems weird because all it is is like an elastic band but there's like a not quite velcro thing going between the material they used for the top and the back of the pillow so when you put it somewhere it just stays there nice so they did a decent job on it and you can put it uh, down below if you really want uh, the armrests go up and down as you'd expect. They go in and out. They also twist. So if you, for some reason, want to twist them in or out on a 33 degree angle or so, you're able to do that. The, uh, raising and lowering is solid. I mean, it's, it's built to hort carry a lot of weight. So you don't get any sinking whatsoever on it. Uh, you got separate lean back for the entire chair itself and the backrest. Uh, both of which are solid and lock in to the point where you've got to sort of lean forward a little bit to unlock them because honestly it is built for a fairly large gamer. They've got smaller ones. Um, they've got ones with Swarovski crystals embedded throughout it. There are RGB kits if that's your sort of thing. But I mean, and the lumbar on it, I have a horrific back. Uh, it's it, it was a factory second that my parents picked up for me before I was born. So it's it's working 
uh, like the Han 2.0 Tasker that I had before was one of the few chairs I've encountered that didn't bug me after a couple of hours. This thing, I'm really enjoying it. Because it's me, I do have to occasionally shift it around, but it's very easy to just sort of tilt the chair forward and put the back back or vice versa, depending on what my back wants at the time. And when you lean back, it's again, solid. It, it expects you to be a little bit heavy. So yeah, if, if you're disappointed with gaming chairs overall, because they're squishy, the, the cushion bottoms out within a week or two. And like you say, with the rollerblades, you just like skate all over the place. It's, it's worth taking a look at. Uh, the MSRP, uh, is, 550 bucks. I mean, gaming chairs are an, ex an expensive accessory. However, it's been on for 450 since I saw it the original time when they, they offered to send this to me to review about April or May. And it just suddenly showed up one day. So it's, it's been a hundred bucks off the entire time. So, I mean, 450 is not bad for a chair that actually does what it's supposed to. If uh, you that was just being held by a $200 one. That was just held at the border for six yeah, months. Yeah, it just took a that while was, to clear. Yeah, yeah it's, it's customs. Probably fine. Quite likely. Yeah. But yeah, so no spend 100, chairs. 200 bucks on a chair. Yeah. Sorry, you know, I, I just got a I just got a new noble that uh, there was a Ooh. black. There's a there's a Thanksgiving sale. Uh, this one apparently did not sell well, uh, but it's their elite. And uh, it's a copper edition, and it was two hundred bucks, and it was pretty much the same as my previous one that I bought like five years ago for three hundred and fifty that was on sale. So yeah, I had to finally just because the other one just broke down too much. And this is again, you know, it fits me fine. It's you don't sink into the 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 frame. I, I doubt it's even available anymore because 200 bucks is a huge price for this. Anyway. Shall we move on to picks of the week? Please. Oh yeah. Josh, I don't even know us. what I picked Sorry. anymore. Oh, Look, I'll show you. Second. I'll show you. I'll put it on the Josh. screen. Rough week. You're, you're doing my thing, Josh. And I'm, I'm going to oh, actually oh, hey, yeah. I'm going to do yours this week, actually. You have to wait. Okay, do, do mine. Uh, well. Yeah, so 120 bucks off of this 34 inch ultra wide screen, 144 hertz. You know, it's only HDR 400, but still, it's a VA uh, panel. And because yeah, of the curvature, one, one MS, it looks DP 1.4. Nice. Yeah, yeah, two HDMI 2.0. So. You know, 3440 by 1440. It's a uh, it's a nice monitor for uh, 330 bucks. It's it's on sale. Don't know how for long, but you know, stand is reasonable. It can go up and down. <clears throat> These things back three years ago were 900 bucks at minimum. So we've we've gone down significantly. In price, it's a pretty good curve, but with VA and one person watching it, you kind of need it. This is a fifteen hundred curve, right? That's pretty typical on yeah. this panel. Yeah. yeah, I think my Alienware is eighteen hundred, so it's a little oh. bit more flat. Yeah, but the fifteen hundred probably, but mine's an IPS, so it's a little bit uh, nicer on the eyes. But the fifteen is is pretty good for. For, for a VA, you're going to get less uh, kind of colored loss and kind of that whitish after effect. But, you know, Sebastian is what I, I'm talking about. I know. He's a I, use these, I use these 34 1500R VA panels all day, every day. And it's some of my favorite monitors. The one behind me is 3440 by 1440. <clears throat> it's 34 inch mm -hmm. ultra wide, same curvature, but it is IPS. And mm -hmm. you you notice, I mean, it's there. It doesn't have the black levels. It's great, but you mm -hmm. don't have to worry so much about off-axis color when it's it's wrapping around you. Mm -hmm. I love VA panels for these applications. You're pretty mm -hmm. much looking, you know, at the, at a certain viewing distance. You're pretty much looking straight on, no, no matter where you cast your eyes. Right, and you get of the slight, slight way temperature. better blacks. We're talking like static contrast ratio <laughs> on these VA panels is mm -hmm. over three thousand versus yep 
about a thousand for IPS. So it's it's way way better black levels and overall contrast is nicer. So I'm using Chief. an Acer in front of Chief. me and an AOC. This is an AOC behind me, actually. Very similar, almost as, I think it's identical panel, 144. Yeah, but typical sec, second gen. I think yours is a third gen, Josh. Hmm. I don't know. I know it's <clears> cheap. Cheap. It's good. Cheap is good. Mm-hmm. Jeremy, your pick this week. Uh, I couldn't find much, but hey, tis the season to give people stuff to back stuff up on because. As numerous people, including my father, have recently discovered the actual number of backups you have is the number of backups you have minus one. And guess how many he had. So, hey, 16 terabyte Iron Wolf Pro for what is almost half price. 375 bucks Canadian. Uh, And actually not that much cheaper down in the States if you want to shop via Amazon. So it's a great NAS drive, but you can also just throw it in an external hard drive and it's going to do well. Not as well as it will in an ass, but hey, why don't you be a friend and back people's stuff up for them? Set up an ass and let them have access to it. And then charge them for it. Huh. Well, yeah, I mean, hard drive wasn't free. <laughs> I just created a true NAS scale system. It's actually working very, very nicely right now. Hmm. ZFS. ZFS makes I'm, a pretty good product. I'm swimming yeah. through the ocean of ZFS right now. <laughs> Haven't you talked to Alan? He hasn't put you on the, the straight and narrow? No, no, he hasn't. Um, it's funny that you should mention Alan because I, I think it was the underneath your review of the 4080. Did you see the comment on that? There's one comment on that right now. No. His uh, The commenter's name, he signed up as Alan, A-L-L-Y-N, Alan Shrout. I thought you. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on on Sebastian's 4080 review. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, he's, I forgot it's, to his, mention that one. This 4080 isn't driving the screensaver properly anymore. So. Yeah, it's yeah. something about his screensaver is locking up. It's locking up. Help me! Help me! Help me! Please. All right. I guess it's my review. Yeah, it's your, so, it's your pick. So, so Josh, I went here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is the Sabrent Rocket Sabrent. Jeep. Is that yes, the four this terabyte is, one? This is no, the two, two terabyte. terabyte one. Two yeah. terabyte one. And I paid a scandalous $175 for this two oh, terabyte geez. NVMe 4.0. I feel like I stole it. I wish I could get this deal for everyone. This is not my pick. I would hope not because the Samsung uh, 980 Pro is also hundred hundred and eighty dollars for two terabytes and is significantly mm-hmm. faster than that rocket q it's it was the q uh qlc this, well i don't know whether i I'll have to look at this but this was a this was a reasonably good deal 175 bucks now if it was 135 that would be awesome but now yeah. anyway. let's move to my actual pick which okay is, let's move to your actual pick which is a two terabyte Intel 660p, definitely QLC, at $139. Now, normally QLC, we kind of look down our noses at, but a two terabyte and an Intel 660p, I have a one terabyte 660p drive, which I've used the hell out of. And it, it so has I. been a very reasonable NVMe drive. This is look the at that. two terabyte There's 660p. DRAM on this. So it's not, yeah. it's not as bad as it could be. It's not a DRAM with QLC. As, well, it is made by Intel, so they didn't really necessarily want to embarrass themselves. It's the 660p variety. It's a very solid drive. And at two terabytes for $139, I think this is a reasonable deal for... That is um, a reasonable deal. A, a Even a QLC, if you're looking for a lot of space in a, in a reasonably fast NVMe package... This is uh, NVMe 3.0. You know, it's by four, of course. 660p variety. They're out of this business, as far as I know. Or, yes, or they I are. don't know where these are coming from. Yeah. They sold it to SK Hynix. Right. Yep. And now it's- so this $140 just seems like a sweet price for two terabytes for for this. You know, I don't think and it's if all you're suck. doing is reading off of it, you can't really complain about the speed at all. I know this seems like, hey, whatever game or two that you're playing a lot of recently, put it on this drive and use the yeah. NVMe interface on the back of your motherboard. I, th- I think it. I bought that same one. It's it's the 660, not 665. 
but it was like yeah. 289 bucks two years ago. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's been, I, I've been using that in the test machine nonstop yep. from that time. And it's, 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 um, it's a good worker. I've abused the it's hell out of one terabyte, 660p, and it has never shown any issues at all. Yeah. So I think this is a good bet for 139 to two terabytes. Yeah. My pick, and I don't see, of course, for sale anywhere reasonably <laughs> priced, but I'm on AMD's direct store here, the direct buy page. Is it here? Is everything gone? No, it's out of stock now. They had lowered the price of the 6900 XT down to 679 and of course it's out of stock. The 6950 XT I've been seeing for I think it's oh here we go, 799. That is very close to Micro Center price. Yeah, and that's so just, that is it a says really new low deal. price. You can buy it liar. right now 799. Here's the thing. <laughs> You're not going to be able to buy the 7900 XT or XTX when they come out. Let's just face that fact right now. And unless you get really lucky or pay some exorbitant markup on it. So instead of fighting for availability of a spicy new GPU that offers up to 50% better performance, just pay 50% less money and get the 6950 XT. Now, but, I don't know that it'll actually be 50% less money, but you know. Whatever. That's the point. Yes, it's not going to be 50%. Their, their target price is only, what, $100, $200 more than this. I think it's one hundred dollars okay. more. For no, we're, we're talking about real life, though. This is what we're talking oh. about real life, not right, the sorry. imaginary world where you can buy a forty ninety for fifteen ninety nine and a seventy nine hundred <laughs> XTX for nine ninety nine. That is not going to happen. Oh, to very I'm many sorry. people. I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream. <laughs> you have a dream. So that- what's going to happen is AMD is going to have some of those on their site every week for that MSRP, but it's going to be extremely limited. And they've improved their checkout process. So, look, keep watching. I got to be honest. I got to be honest. I was actually balancing: do I get the sixty nine fifty or wait for the X the seven hundred XTX to come out? I'm like, it's so close. A lot of people are uh, on that. They made it so right. tempting. But these price drops. Yes, it's going to be slower than the latest and greatest, but it's going to cost you less, and you can actually buy it right now. So. Do you want to wait and hope and then be disappointed and frustrated when you can't find them and then they're showing up for seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars? Yeah, because the MSRP flagship. is within two hundred bucks. This is two hundred XTX <laughs> is AMD's flagship part, and they have been yeah. extremely aggressive with the price. That won't matter. It's going to be this is the mm. fastest rate on you can get, and it's going to be like eighteen hundred bucks on eBay. And I'll probably be wrong. People can reference this. But, I hope so. Uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be sixteen hundred. Is yeah. it always sixteen hundred? Yeah, but the forty eighties are sixteen hundred. If the if the seven hundred XTX ends up being faster than a forty eighty, or at least right, trades blows, enough. it'll make end up being sense. as much or more than make the forty eighty. And it has make more memory. Sense. It has twenty four gigabytes of memory mm. versus sixteen with the forty eighty. So mm. maybe I should just buy the seventy nine hundred, the XT, not the XTX. With twenty gigs, sure, why not? Yeah. You can get it for eight ninety nine. That's not going to be sold out. Eight ninety nine. It will be sold out. Mark my words, Josh. It is eleven fifty six p.m. on the East Coast on November thirty mm-hmm. two thousand twenty two. Oh, you it's, it's going to be sold out. You will not be able to buy an XT <laughs> for eight ninety nine. I was looking at old reviews recently because that's what I like to do. I mean, and there was a non tech review. There was a non tech review of the fifty nine seventy when it came out, and that was my first high end graphics card, and I had I had to buy it. Uh, like a clearance closeout thing. I bought an OEM card for Wait, 5970 or 5870? Sorry, 5870. Thank you. I bought a 5870 for $169 when they were going out and you could buy them cheap. And that was my entry into high end gaming. Oh, it was so good. And I overclocked mine into a gigahertz, put an aftermarket like Arctic cooler on it, and had a lot of fun with that card. But uh, the reviews back then, I was surprised at how much of this. This stuff that we complain about now has already happened before. It's all nothing Shocking, new under the it? sun. There's nothing new under the sun at all. Back then, people were complaining about availability, availability. Comments on the Anantec review. Yeah, it's been a month and still you can't buy one of these cards. 
it, th- <laughs> they announce the stuff as early as they can. They release the stuff in limited quantities to make their, you know, release date. And the stuff isn't really ramping up and they're not really getting good yields until later on down the road. And then you can actually buy the stuff. So you're going to have to get lucky. I don't know. Maybe join Team Red now and hope you get one of those emails that I guess they get or something. Mm. But I, I'm very tempted by a 6950 XT. It's the wrong time of year, though, for me to be spending $800 on a graphics card. But I have never I, had a 6900 series card to test. I almost drove in to pick one of these up, and it was the it was the really uh, sweet power color one with the um, the uh, seven slot wide cooler. You know the one I'm seven talking about. Seven slot wide <laughs> cooler. <laughs> I <laughs> had to buy an EOTX case from my ATX motherboard just to fit the AMG. Yeah, I had to get a one. full tower. <laughs> it was, it was, it was a gigantic cooler. Anyways, they had Micro Center had it for seven eighty four. 6950 XT power color over OC, the fat, fat, fat cooler. I'm like, ah, I don't know. And then they only had four and I missed it. I would buy so. this one direct from AMD. Yeah, I know. The, a- this one is colored, is is actually aesthetically uh, has, it's like a silver black uh, aesthetic versus the red, the more mm-hmm. red of the 1600. I'm partial to Sapphire for my aftermarket designs. What but do you think about the AMD, toxic though? The toxic was a little bit, a uh, little bit. You got to kind of go with that theme. I don't know. Like I'm more of like a nitro plus. Yeah, I mean, I, I get agree. to handle those briefly and then send them back. <laughs> Every graphics card <laughs> launch. Sapphire. So I, oh, man. this is it's. <laughs> I, they're so cool and quiet, and you get a little bit higher performance out of them than the stock card. Their trick software is actually okay too. Yeah, it's it's yeah. absolutely fine. And it's an easy way to do the upscaling and the sharpening and stuff all. Very good. Yep. It looks like, like AMD is working upscale. on making their software better and doing the one click thing. But tricks, you know, mm-hmm. it's, you can do it now. Yeah. Anyway, that is our show. Josh, oh, do you want to attempt an outro or should we just end it? Oh, I mean, it's geez. midnight. You know what? On the East Coast. <clears throat> Hold on. Let me give you camera one. They say the comedy prolonged becomes tragedy and tragedy prolonged becomes comedy and i'm still not even sure at which point we're at at this time two hours into this recording all i know is that i've got tinnitus in my ears that for some reason in the past three weeks has has become nearly unbearable but then i drink and then suddenly everything becomes bearable and i hope that you listen to this podcast while drinking so that it too becomes more bearable and with that I wish you a good night